Hey guys, how about we uh, talk about something called calorimetry today. Calorimetry is the measurement of heat. You can see the word calor right there, which means heat, and metry, the measurement of something. So uh, here's a couple pictures to kind of think about with uh, the measurement of heat. And the first one here, we've got a little burner, uh, a little alcohol stove, if you will, a little flame going. We put it underneath a beaker with some water in it. There's a thermometer jam down in there. Uh, you wouldn't be too surprised if I told you that that water is going to heat up, that the energy from the fire is going to go into the beaker, into the water, and uh, into the thermometer, make those molecules vibrate more rapidly. They expand, and uh, the, the temperature as recorded by the thermometer will go up. The energy is moving from the spirit burner to the, to the water, heating it up. Um, you can probably also guess that a whole lot of heat is spilling off this way and this hot water here is radiating heat out into the room and uh, the, the beaker itself is absorbing some of that. So, so there's a lot of wasted heat kind of going on there and, and we're not really capturing all of it and measuring uh, very accurately how much heat was put out by the spirit burner there. Only some of it makes it to the thermometer. So over here on the right hand side, I've got a little bit better picture uh, where there is a sample of something. And um, if I wanted to know how much energy was in that something, then I could put it in here and burn it down inside here. This is all underwater, but it's in an enclosed capsule there. And that heat would then go into the surrounding water and it's all captured and it it's a, does a lot better job than the first picture at, at holding all of that heat and of course we're measuring the uh, temperature there uh, there is a little stir to kind of keep it from you know to, to evenly distribute the uh, the heat in the water and everything but that's a little bit better system uh, this is usually called a bomb calorimeter there's no bomb I don't know where the bomb comes from but um, maybe it looks like a some kind of old crazy bomb I don't know but it's a device for measuring how much heat there is in something and uh, when you look at a, uh, a food item it will say how many calories does that item have if you took a Snickers bar you could put it in the bomb calorimeter here and you could burn it and all of that sugar and all that fat and all the peanuts and everything would burn up and create a lot of heat and that heat would go into the water and we could measure how much heat is in a Snickers bar. How much energy is in a Snickers bar? Of course, when you eat, uh, you you get that energy in you, and that's what runs your body. So so the energy is good, and uh, this is how they measure it. Uh, that number would come off of the thermometer, and, and you could uh, put it on your candy bar wrapper. All right, so that's kind of neat. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that we want to talk about here. Uh, first up, We've got uh, some units. I need to tell you how to measure heat. And of course, we've already measured energy way back in first semester physics. We used the joule. You remember that a joule was a newton meter, a newton times a meter. And um, that's, that's the imperial unit. I'm sorry, not the imperial, the uh, international system SI unit, uh, they call it there. So that's our favorite way to measure heat. Uh, or energy of any kind, but especially heat here. Uh, you can use it to, you can uh, also use calories, abbreviated CAL or small c calorie. Uh, that would be the heat to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. So that goes back to what we were talking about with the, uh, with the calorimeter. If I knew how much water I had and I raised the temperature one degree, for one gram of water, that would be one small c calorie. Now there's also a big c calorie, or a kilocalorie would be a better name for it. Uh, it gets a little confusing here, but a, a kilocalorie, or the big c calorie, and I should have put a small c here and not the big c, whatever, uh, the, is the heat to raise one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. That's the one that we use in the on the Snickers bar label that I was talking about all the uh, the food calories are really kilocalories so if you had a kilocalorie then that would or on the food label one calorie 
you could heat one kilogram of water one degree Celsius with that much energy. That's kind of kind of interesting. That's a lot of heat. Uh, there is a, another way to do it with imperial units. The British thermal unit, BTU, would be the heat needed to raise one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. So it's very similar, except now we're using imperial units. The one I'm going to use mostly, though, would be joules, because that's our favorite. Uh, it's not too hard to get back and forth. A kilocalorie is a thousand regular calories. Uh, that's equal to 4,184 joules. That's a useful number to have, and we'll see it again in another context here in just a second. It's also equal to 3.97 BTUs. So whatever units you have, you can uh, do all the conversions here and get back and forth between that. Now, I put a big red Q here. Q is the symbol that we use for heat. And so whenever we're talking about measuring heat, uh, you'll see a Q in there somewhere. And uh, we'll, we'll see that pretty quick. There's one other letter I need you to know, uh, and that's C, the specific heat capacity. Now, we've already seen this number for water. It takes 4,187 or 6 or 90 or something. You see different numbers here depending on uh, some different factors, but this is a good enough number for us. And uh, that's how many joules per kilogram degree Celsius it takes to heat water. If I had one kilogram of water and I wanted to raise it one degree Celsius, I would need 4,187 joules to do that. If I had two kilograms, I'd have to have twice as much because I'm eating twice as much water. And, and it just goes on like that. Uh, there are numbers for ice and steam and wood and aluminum. You can see that everything requires different amounts of energy to warm it up one degree Celsius. Uh, water is the hardest thing on this list to heat. It takes a lot of energy to heat water. Uh, steam only takes about half as much. Uh, I'm sorry, ice there. Uh, steam's about the same number. Uh, wood, not a whole lot there, but uh, aluminum and glass and copper. Um, as you go down this list, different materials heat differently. They're going to require different amounts of energy to heat them up. And uh, so that's an interesting uh, list right there. Uh, if you don't want to do it in joules and kilograms and degrees Celsius, you could come over here and do it in either calories or kilograms per kilogram. I'm sorry, kilocalories per kilogram, and the numbers are there. But I'm going to work off of this list here with joules because that's the units that we like. Uh, in second semester physics here, it's really important to match up all of your units and make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. And, and uh, if you just go ahead and get in the habit of, of working with joules, that's your best bet. But this heat capacity, sometimes it's called heat, heat capacity, sometimes it's called specific heat, whatever. Uh, we use the letter C. And again, it's how much energy does it take to change the temperature of a kilogram of that material. All right, so good. Uh, here's what you do with that, those two numbers here. Uh, we are measuring heat. We want to know how much, why well, won't my page turn? There we go. Uh, we want to know how much heat it takes to raise the temperature. I got a little formula for you, uh, the first in today's discussion. Uh, Q, that's the amount of heat, uh, is going to be equal to MC delta T. The more mass you have, then the more heat you have to have. As the mass goes up, the heat goes up. Right here is that C, that heat capacity. And the more heat it takes to heat that material, if it's glass or aluminum or brass or whatever, then that's going to make the, uh, the heat go up, the necessary heat. And of course, over here, delta T would be the change in temperature. If I want to heat the thing up more, then I need more heat. So the formula makes perfect sense. Those are all direct relationships with those variables. And we just multiply the three numbers. There's nothing hard here. Uh, let me do this little example for you, and I think you'll see what I mean. Uh, it says find the energy needed to heat 4 kilograms of iron from 20 degrees Celsius to 47 degrees Celsius. So lots of ways you could come at this thing. Uh, but maybe the uh, best thing to do here would be to come in and we could say, well, delta T is the change in temperature. Uh, we always want to do T sub F, the final temperature minus T sub I, the initial temperature. 
And here that's going to be 47 degrees Celsius uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius or 27 degrees Celsius. Now we could have done that in the problem too, but uh, that's where that delta T comes in. So I've got <clears throat> delta T. Uh, they told me that I'm talking about 4 kilograms here of iron. So I've got the mass. I need this heat capacity, and that's where I go back to the table, and it's iron that we're talking about here. So here's the table again, and I'm going to go down, 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 and it says 448 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. That's the number that I need to heat iron with. So I'm going to just uh, pencil in somewhere right here. C equals 448 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. How much energy to heat one kilogram, one degree Celsius? And then I come in here with my formula. Q equals MC delta T. I've got four kilograms. My heat capacity is 448 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And my delta T, the change in temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now before we start pushing buttons here, let me just kind of uh, check my units and make sure that this is going to be okay. I see a kilogram here on top that will cancel the kilogram on the bottom. And there's a degree Celsius here and a degree Celsius there. Those are going to uh, cancel out. If I can get in there and, and do it. Uh, all right, that one's going to cancel out that one. What's left? All I've got left is joules. I was looking for a, for a measurement of heat, which I measure in joules. So the units look good here and everything's fine. Here's my calculator. And all I have to do is say 4 times 448 times 27. And I got my answer, 48,384 joules. Now that's, a lot of, that's a lot of energy, right? 48,384. You may want to round that off somewhere, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just leave it there. Uh, two or three significant digits, one, two, three, something like that might be appropriate, but I don't care about that part. Um, that's the uh, the amount of heat that I would have to to do to heat that much iron. If I had more iron, I'd have to have more energy, right? Let's let's do uh, let's say I got ten kilograms times four four eight, and I want to heat it twenty seven degrees. Okay. I need 121,000 joules, right? So it goes up. A lot of times we do use kilocalories. I'm sorry, kilojoules. So, uh, you know, you may well see this written as uh, 48.4 kilojoules. And you just treat that just like any other metric prefix there. Uh, but that would be, since uh, these numbers tend to end up pretty big, a lot of times we'll switch over to kilo or mega or some some kind of prefix in there. All right, but that's sensible heat. I think they call it sensible heat not because it makes sense that you heat something in it and the temperature goes up, but because you can sense that change. You can measure it with a thermometer. You put a thermometer in the water and it heats up, you can measure that. You can sense it. So it's sensible heat. Now, I do have another kind of heat here that's called latent heat. And uh, the word latent means hidden. So you can't sense or see uh, this, this kind as much. Um, you might hear somebody described as, oh, they had latent tendencies as an axe murderer. Okay, something like that. Let's hope not. But uh, that was hidden. Nobody knew. You know, everybody thought they were just a nice guy. And then uh, their true nature came out. Latent means hidden. So we're not going to be able to measure this with a thermometer. We're not going to be able to sense it. Uh, in the same way that we did the, the sensible heat. But this kind right here, uh, instead of changing the temperature, with this one, uh, we're changing the state. And by state, uh, the choices kind of are solid, liquid, or gas. If I change from, uh, let's say I take an ice cube at zero degrees Celsius, and I change that to zero degree water, liquid, that takes energy. And this little formula will tell us how much energy it takes. 
I need to, again, to know how much mass we're talking about. Is it a big block of ice or a little bitty block of ice? All right. And then L here is another number like C that tells us, well, here's the number for water, for aluminum, for gold, for silver, for whatever. Uh, that's a material dependent number. We got to go to a table. Where's the table? Glad you asked. Right here it is. And uh, you can see that we've got some different materials listed here. And uh, so that looks very familiar. Um, I've got an L sub F and an L sub V. And those are the two uh, different ones that we need. You notice they've got melting point and boiling point. So you can pretty well see that that uh, this is how much energy it takes to go from solid to liquid. And this one would be how much energy it takes to go from liquid to gas. All right. This is called the heat of fusion. And that name drives me crazy. There's no fusion in the sense of uh, nuclear fusion here. Um, but but I guess if, if you went from solid down to an ice, it would kind of fuse together or something. I, I think that's a really unfortunate name. Uh, what they're really doing there is to melt. This is the, uh, the melting heat right here. Or if you remove 399 joules, uh, I'm sorry, kilojoules of... Um, of heat from aluminum then you could go from from liquid aluminum to solid aluminum uh, that change would happen at 659 degrees Celsius over here this is called the heat of vaporization that, that name I'm okay with that because of vapor is uh, is gas that's uh, like water vapor I've got steam there right so here uh, this is where we boil it and you've got your boiling temperatures over here. Aluminum boils, turns from a solid into, I'm sorry, turns from a liquid into a gas at uh, 2300 degrees Celsius. That's pretty hot. That's probably why you've never seen molten, I'm sorry, not molten, uh, a gas form of, of aluminum. These other things, um, they're, except for lead, a little more realistic. And water is probably the, uh, the one that we're most familiar with. If you take an ice cube right here at zero degrees Celsius, um, I can have a zero degree solid. That's an ice cube. I can have a zero degree Celsius liquid, a glass of water. Okay, and it changes right there. Uh, it's not the temperature that does it. It's the temperature. It, you know, that's where it changes like that. But I've got to know the uh, the temperature and how much energy it takes to go from solid to liquid. And that's what this other formula has for us. Uh, up here, it's going to boil. Uh, that would be going from liquid to solid. Uh, not solid, to gas, sorry. And uh, that happens at 100 degrees Celsius. All right, so that's our boiling point, our melting point. And then I've got uh, a number here that I have to use. And a number here that I have to use that both of those, those latent heat or the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization, those tell me how much I've got to multiply by here uh, for that particular material. All right, now I've forgotten what the material was, so let's go back and look at this again. I got four kilograms of iron and I want to change it from solid to liquid. Got the formula right there, it says that Q equals ML. Clearly, the M is the mass which they gave me. And L is that constant. So I got to go to the table and go iron. I messed up because iron isn't even on the list. Okay. So uh, the easiest fix here would be uh, just let me change this to aluminum. Would that be all right? And uh, we're trying to melt aluminum. So I need this uh, number right there. Don't forget the units. Always check your units. It's it. The units will eat you alive here. Okay. Make sure that you got what you what you think you have. So 399 kilojoules per kilogram. Let's go back to that, and I'm going to write L sub F. That would be the heat of fusion. That temp that that point where it goes from solid to liquid was 399 kilojoules per kilogram or maybe a better way to write it would be 399,000 
joules per kilogram. That would probably be better because then you don't have to think about that kilojoule. Go ahead and write it that way. But that's the number that I need to put in right here. Like that. I got kilograms on top, kilograms on the bottom. My only unit left is joules. I'm looking for a heat. That looks good, right? So we're, we're good to go here. And we push some buttons. I need to do four times 399-000. And that would be 1,596,000 joules. All right. So there's our number. And uh, we did change this from iron to aluminum. Just because I'm too lazy to go look up the number. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. Now, sometimes we have to do both of these things. For example, if I had an ice cube, um, I could take it from uh, one temperature up to the melting point, and then I could melt it, and then maybe I change the temperature of the water that used to be the ice. So these can get a little more involved here. Uh, here's a small example of this. Uh, how much heat it take to melt two kilograms of ice so the thing I always have to ask myself is this sensible or latent because I've got those two formulas and uh, I need to know which one to use the sensible was Q equals MC Delta T and the latent was Q equals ML that's not a very good equals there but uh, um, I think you can see here that I'm trying to melt it. I'm trying to change the state. I want to go from solid to liquid. So that would be the latent. And that's the formula that I need to use right here. Uh, two kilograms. Uh, I'm talking about ice going to water. So I go to the table. This is the latent heat table. And I come down here to water. Right here is the number that takes me the heat of fusion to melt uh, ice into water. I need 334 kilojoules per kilogram. So I'll put that in right here. I went ahead and switched it to joules, which I would recommend that you do like that. Uh, when I double that, I get 668,000 joules. Uh, as soon as this kilogram cancels that one, uh, that would be the number there. So that would be the first part, and you kind of have to do that part. And then down here it says how much heat will it take to raise the temperature of that same 2 kilograms of water by 17 degrees Celsius. That's a change of temperature, so now I'm talking about the sensible stuff, and i got to use the sensible heat formula. And that would be Q equals MC delta T. And uh, i got 2 kilograms... I need the heat capacity. I go way back, not to this table, not to the latent heat table, but to the C table, to this one. And I'm seeing that uh, 4,187 joules, regular joules, not kilojoules, um, per uh, kilogram degree Celsius. All right, 4187. And I put that in right here. And then I need a delta T. Of course, that's the uh, change in temperature. We're trying to warm this stuff up 17 degrees. Uh, let's check the units. Kilogram on uh, top right here. Kilogram on the bottom right there. Degree Celsius on top. Degree Celsius on the bottom. Nothing but joules left. So we're still, still in the park here. And uh, 2 times 4187 times 17 works out to that number, 142,358. And maybe you want to chop that off somewhere. I'm going to hold on to it for right now. Um, it's kind of interesting. You know, you think, well, it takes a lot of energy to heat something. This is water. We already said it's really hard to heat. But uh, look at that. To change the state, to melt it, it went from zero degree ice to zero degree liquid water. 
Uh, it, it didn't even change temperature, but it took a ton of energy to melt that stuff. And, uh, and so that's, that's what we're trying to do here. The bottom question says, how much does it take to melt it and raise the, uh, the temperature? Well, we've already done both parts of it, but I think you can see that the total heat is going to be equal to the, uh, the sensible heat that we did in the first part. I'm sorry, the latent heat in the first part plus the uh, sensible heat that we did in the second part. And if I just add this much plus this much, I'll get the total uh, for this. And whatever that number is. And then I'd probably want to round that somewhere, like say three significant digits or something. But uh, 668,000 uh, plus 142,358. I might carry it all along, get that number, and say, ah, that's about 810,000 joules. Okay. So that's not uh, tricky there. Um, that works out just fine. Um, it's always good to have this picture in your mind, though. We're saying I'm starting with with solid water, ice, right? And that's at zero degrees Celsius. So, so right there. And all I'm doing is melting it, not changing the temperature. So when I get here is zero degree liquid water. So it went from a solid cube to a puddle here and then I heated the puddle up to a higher temperature uh, in this case 17 degrees Celsius almost room temperature okay and uh, so we had two transitions there and you add it you get the total I got a little bit uh, bit bigger picture here for you uh, of everything that kind of happens here and see if you can kind of follow this along uh, what we're doing here is we're starting with a block of ice, heating that up, and and uh, eventually it's going to melt, and then it's going to turn into steam. So if I take this all the way, uh, it looks down here at the bottom, like I've got ice starting at negative 20 degrees Celsius. First thing I have to do is to heat it up to the melting point. I got to take it from negative 20 to zero. So maybe, you know, an even better picture would be, say, here's my cube of ice it's starting out negative 20 degrees Celsius. And first up, I've got to take it to zero degrees Celsius. All right. It's still solid ice at that point. Now I've got to put some more heat into it and turn it into a puddle that's still going to be zero degrees Celsius. I got to heat that up to the, to the uh, boiling point, which would be 100 degrees Celsius. Then I can turn that into steam at 100 degrees. And then I can heat the steam up to, what's it say there, 120 degrees? Okay. So that's the picture that, you know, this is kind of what's happening there. And I think it's really handy to, to draw every step of that and say, I've got cold, cold ice. I'm going to heat it into regular ice. I'm going to melt that ice into a puddle then I'm going to heat up the puddle to the boiling point and then I'm going to boil it add some more heat to make it go from liquid to gas and then finally now that it's a gas I'm going to heat it into to steam and that picture kind of keeps me going straight the part that I'm really interested in are all the times that I have to add heat so I really have to do one two oh, let's see this thing. One, two, three, four, five. I'm counting the arrows there. Those are the transitions. And I've got to add energy at every one of those. Uh, this would be a sensible heat change here. This is a latent change. I'm changing state. Uh, I can see the temperature change from 0 to 100, so that's sensible. Then I change from puddle to column of steam. That is uh, a state change, latent. And then I've got another sensible change right there so whatever you got to do to keep up with the bookkeeping of this thing and make sure that it's doing on the graph it looks kind of neat it's kind of interesting how it does that um, right here 
you can see I'm going from negative 20 to 0. Sensible heat change. But then i got to add all of this heat, and I don't get any temperature change. I started at 0. I'm still at 0. So it just goes sideways right there. I'm adding heat this way, but I'm not adding temperature. It flattens out. That's a latent. All these, these black arrows are latent heat changes. Probably should have switched to black. And uh, right here I have sensible going up. Uh, once it turns into liquid water, now i got a sensible change. This is uh, that step three right there. Uh, step four was another latent, where I go from uh, liquid, 100 degree water, to 100 degree steam. Change the state, so that's latent. And then over here, I'm heating the steam from 100 to 120 degrees. That's sensible again. All right. You need a little picture like that to keep it straight. And uh, I've got one example here. I don't want to beat this to death. But uh, right here is uh, one of these things where we go all the way. And I always start these things with a picture. Hopefully I've got enough room here to do this. But uh, let's see what happens. I'm tired of red. <clears throat> I'm going to start with a block of ice that's at negative 7 degrees Celsius. I got two kilograms of it and when I get done way over here I want it to be 105 degrees not a block of ice so let me take that back out I want a uh, column of steam over here that's 105 degrees Celsius and I got to think about all the steps in the middle that it's going to take to turn this into that uh, the first thing that i got to do is to warm up the ice cube to the melting point. So that would be 0 degrees Celsius. And then I'm going to melt it. Here's a puddle of 0 degree water. And then i got to warm up that puddle to the uh, boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius. And then i got to turn it into steam, which is going to be at the same temperature. And then finally I can heat the steam over there. So I've got to add heat one, two, three, four, five times. And that matches what we saw in that graph where I had a, uh, a sensible and a latent and a sensible and a latent and a sensible change right there. I need uh, one term for each of those arrows. So I'm going to come in here and say Q equals mc delta t there's a sensible plus ml that is the latent in step number two i got another sensible i got another latent i got another sensible now what i highly recommend you do is to put some kind of marker so that you know what it is that you're talking about right here this is ice so I need to say, oh, this is going to be awful here, isn't it? M sub I, C sub I. You can put delta T sub I, I guess, if you wanted to. But the big deal is the C sub I. Because i got to come over here and decide, am I heating ice, or am I heating water, or am I heating steam? On that first term, I need that. So some kind of little marker there says, now I'm heating ice. And now I'm heating water. And over here, I'm heating steam. Okay? And you would pick up whichever value of C you need. On the latent numbers, this was going from solid to liquid. That's heat of fusion. So I'm going to put a little F right there. All right here, uh, on this step, I'm going from liquid to gas. So that's the heat of vaporization. And I need, you know, this number and not that number. So you got to keep all these things straight and in the right place. Uh, the mass is always 2 kilograms. I started with 2 kilograms. I end up with 2 kilograms. Uh, you could factor that out if you want. Uh, I'm not going to just because I want to see the units and what they're going to do. But uh, when you actually work these things, if you want to pull that M out front, that's fine. I'm going to put 2 kilograms of mass. Uh, that first term, C sub I, says uh, the number I need is 2,040. Uh, 
joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And I'm going from negative 7 to 0, final minus initial. I'm heating that up 7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's my first term. I've done this one. Move on to the second one. It's mass times the heat of fusion. I got 2 kilograms. I come down here, the heat of fusion is 335,000. Uh, joules per kilogram. So that took care of this step. And then I'm going um, a sensible heat change, zero degree water to 100 degree water. So I've got two kilograms. I need the heat capacity. That would be uh, of water. It used to be ice, but now it's melted and we're talking about water. So that would be 4,185 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. It's going from 0 to 100. That's an increase of 100 degrees Celsius. Like that. I'm going to skip down here for uh, steps um, 4 and 5 because we just did 3. Okay. Uh, right here I've got 2 kilograms. I need to change from liquid to gas. Uh, that would be this heat of vaporization at the bottom. Good gracious, 2 million that's a big number. 260,000 joules per kilogram. Like that. And the last one here would be 2 kilograms. I'm looking at steam now because I just boiled it. And so I need to use the uh, heat capacity of steam, 1,996 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. I'm going from 100 to 105, that's an increase of 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, now I think you can multiply all that out, it's not hard to do, but uh, the hard part is keeping up with all this thing. The hard part is making sure that all the units work out. We'll take a look at that in just a second, but uh, let me get you a number here. I got 2 times 20, 40 times 7, plus 2 times 335, 000, plus uh, 2. 4185 times 100. Put it in just like it shows. No big deal here. And hopefully I'm putting it in like it shows. I'm trying to walk and talk at the same time here. Who knows what I'm putting in. Um, 6 million. Let's put the whole thing in. You can round it wherever you want. I probably can't remember all that though. 6075520. 6075520. Ha! I did it. Okay. That's supposed to be in joules. Never hurts to check and make sure the uh, kilogram here. Going to cancel the kilogram there. Degree Celsius. Degree Celsius. There's my joules for the first term. Kilogram. Kilogram. Joules. Kilogram. Kilogram. I think you can see this is going to work out. But just always get in the habit of making sure there's so many ways to measure heat, so many ways to measure mass. Uh, the heat capacity units might not match. You know, you might get one number off of one table and have to go somewhere else for something. But just make sure that all those units, if it's not joules, 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 or, or calories, 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 then you can't add it. All right, but this is uh, the number right there that we need. Um, I don't know if you appreciate this or not, but let me just take this number right here. 2 times 260,000. Uh, that's 5 million. I'm sorry, no, that's... Uh, wait a minute, what did I do wrong? I didn't put it in the calculator right, did I? I left the zero off. Uh, 2 times 2,260,000 is uh, four and a half million right there. If I think about that as a fraction of the entire uh, amount of heat here, I'm going to chop off some at this point. Or don't. I'll put it in if you want. Okay, but something like that. Uh, when I take that fraction there, uh, I've already got it in. Let me put in the right number here. 75520. I think I did that right. 
um, 74%, the hugest, largest part of all this is tied up in that step right there. Which one takes the most energy out of all this? It's this fourth term right there where we're changing it. Uh, it's, it's this guy. It's this latent heat step right there. That's 74% of all the energy. Now, it would change slightly with different numbers that I put in, right? 74 is not always the same. But with these numbers, um, you know, three quarters of the energy is right there in that step and just trying to boil uh, the, the water. Um, I do a little bit of backpacking, bike packing and stuff. And you got to carry all your fuel with you uh, to cook, right? So people have figured out ways to uh, cook food, pasta, whatever, you know, without actually boiling the water. If you can just get it up to, you know, hot water and not actually boiling, then you can save a whole lot of energy here because you're not having to do that uh, state change there. So uh, there's some practical applications, and, and sometimes you want that heat in there. Uh, if you're talking about, uh, you know, steam train or something, steam's going to have more energy than hot water would. So maybe you, you want that energy in there to, to store it and to do work for you. That's some of the stuff we want to talk about a little bit later on. Okay, um, but that's calorimetry, and I think that's uh, everything we wanted to do here. It'll let me turn this silly page. Yeah, that's enough for today. Um, watch your units. Keep track of everything. Make a picture. Same old stuff we've always done in physics. But uh, that's calorimetry for you. Thank you very much. Have a good day.